first ever demo session of market risk model development. Welcome, welcome everyone from the entire DMATX lab and analytics. So uh, I would, uh, so I am Tanmay Ganguly and I would be your host and the facilitator for this demo session. And going forward, if we have to, if we have a longer term relationship, we would be, uh, so I would be your facilitator going forward. So, uh, so before starting off, a small little introduction about myself. Uh, I am, uh, so I am Tanmay Ganguly and I uh, host this, I would be hosting this market risk model modeling session, as well as I host another mod module on behalf of DexLab Analytics called the credit risk modeling. Uh, talking about my background, I, I come from a very mixed background of academic experience as well as an industry experience and mostly uh, my experience has been around finance across different types of finance. So be it around uh, stock markets or be it around banking risk, uh, I have mostly worked my entire career on or around finance. And uh, standing from that perspective, finance, and given that finance has been my interests over, uh, I mean, that has been one of my area of interest. I I have been specializing around loss forecasting, risk model development, validation, and so on. And it is out of my interest in this area that this we at Xlab Analytics have tried formulating a new module, a new endeavor to help risk professionals uh, move into the domain. Right. So that's much about myself. And before we start off, uh, let's have a brief round of introduction uh, from the audience. So just to start off, it would be great if every, each one of you could, uh, I mean, introduce yourself to us, uh, starting with uh, Ajaz. Hi, Ajaz. Welcome to the session. If you could please introduce yourself to us. Um, hi, Tanmay, uh, and uh, everyone else. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, Ajaz, you are audible. Great. Ajaz, uh, I am losing out your voice. Uh, I think there is some connectivity issue. I mean, can the others hear Ajaz? I mean, I just want to identify whether the issue is at my end or not. Could you? Uh, Hello? Yeah, you are. Hello, on. are you able to hear me? Yeah, I think, Ajaz, you uh, like there is a disturbance in your voice. I'm not getting things clear. Yeah, so the others also cannot hear you. I think there is some connectivity, some issue at your end. Could you kindly rejoin? Sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. So while Ajaz rejoins, uh, let's start off with Lokesh. Hi, Lokesh. Uh, welcome to the forum. If you could please introduce yourself to all of us. Just unmute yourself and please introduce. Hello, Lokesh. Okay, okay. Hi, Lokesh. Am I audible to you? Can you hear me? Hi, Lokesh. Hello. Am I audible to you, Lokesh? Okay. Uh, hi, Lokesh. Am I audible? Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, just let's get back to Ajaz since Ajaz has joined back. Hi, Ajaz. Hi, Tanmayda. Hi. Um, Hi am I audible now? Yeah, you are perfectly audible, Ajaz. 
Great. Um, first of all, um, uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Ajaz, Ajaz, there is a connectivity at your issue at your end. So whenever you are speaking uh, continuously for some time, uh, there is a disconnection that is happening. Uh, in case you have a connectivity issue, we can hear you for short sentences. So could you just uh, you, you could just use a chat box for your introduction in that case. Sure, I'll use the chat box. Just give me two minutes, please. Sure, sure. Until then, I'll just carry on with Rohit. Hi, Rohit. Welcome to the session. If you could please introduce yourself to us. Hi, Tanmay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, you are audible. You are perfectly audible. Okay, yeah. Hi, Tanmay. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, uh, Tanmay, uh, myself, Rohit, Rohit Kumar Pandey, and I'm a fresher in this uh, profile. Okay. Uh, I have just uh, completed my certification in data analytics from IV Pro Professional School. Okay. And these days I'm looking for a job. And apart from that, I have also completed my certificate program with IIT Kanpur, okay. uh, where I have completed my uh, diploma courses in like introduction to data analytics and introduction to R software. Great, great. Okay. And I have done various projects on as well as R uh, in my studio itself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So, uh, what would be yeah, your? Uh, that's it from my end. Yeah. So Rohit, uh, any uh, expectations that you have from this module uh, by you have gone through the course uh, module and so uh, if you have any expectations, if you could just share that with us, it would be great for me. I mean, it would become very easy for me to address those issues uh, while uh, while I start off things from my end. So if you have anything, any special queries, oh. anything that you would like me to address in particular. Well, uh, if we talk about finance, then, then I'm completely new in this profile because the projects that I have done before, like it's not, it's completely out of this finance field. Okay. Okay. Because I've done on sales and uh, like logistic okay. integration. Okay. Okay. Perfect. But, uh, right. Okay. Great, Rohit. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank, okay. thank you. Yeah. So I just move next to Uchab. Hi, Uchab. Welcome back to market risk classes. And if you could please introduce ourselves, uh, I mean, introduce yourself to us. Hi, Ucha. Thanks. Uh, so uh, I'm Ucha. So I have eight and a half years of experience with uh, uh, being a programmer, and then later on moved into analytics. I'm a, a you know a master's in management uh, that I have from XLRI. And I have also done in project management. Currently, I, uh, uh, you know, execute several analytics projects across different horizontals. Uh, uh, so basically, across different domains, uh, primarily uh, finance and retail. So that's been my expertise. And uh, recently, I have joined a company where I work on uh, supply chain domain. So that's been my uh, expertise. Uh, as far as the expectation from the course goes, I. I think uh, uh, this market risk, as per my knowledge, requires a lot of uh, background on the corporate finance side, understanding the beta, understanding the uh, I know the um, uh, overall risk uh, in the, the risk factor in a market. Uh, that requires a lot of understanding on corporate finance. I think the course will be able to give uh, the proper foundation for that, as well as the modeling side of things. Uh, so that's that's what my expectation from the course goes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uchha. Thanks a lot. Uh, so I just move next to Yogesh. Hi, Yogesh. Uh, thanks, Tanmada. So hello, everyone. Uh, myself, Yogesh, and I'm having around three years of experience in uh, credit risk modeling and IFRS 9. So currently I'm working on IFRS 9 projects based out in Middle East and handling uh, credit risk modeling projects as well. So this is a brief about the uh, and as far as the expectations on this model is concerned, so 
So I mean, in terms of market risk, I think you have to be good in stats because there are a lot of things covered in terms of analytics and statistics. Uh, apart from that, you must be good in software, like, like a SAS or R, where where you have where you have coding part and run all the uh, statistical tests and all. Where uh, we, uh, and apart from that, uh, yeah. So as rightly mentioned, the also you have to be uh, you have good you have to have a good knowledge of uh, 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 corporate finance. Uh, yeah, I think that is enough from my side. Okay, okay, great. Thanks, Yogesh. Okay, so I can see there is another mm -hmm. person who has joined us recently, Aryan. Hi, Aryan. Welcome to Market Risk to the Market Risk demo session. And if you could just unmute yourself and introduce yourself to us. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, uh, I'm audible. Yeah, you are audible, Aryan. You are perfectly audible. Okay. Okay. Hi, hi, Shubhra, and hi, everyone. Uh, so this is Aryan. Uh, so yeah, I am. Uh, I am. I am working. Uh, you know, in bank banking domain, uh, mostly in credit risk modeling as well as machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know, building risk models and all. And uh, this, uh, you know, market risk. You know, session I saw. You know, and not for it. And so my my like uh, I I am not uh, much into you know this. Uh, PDVAR and all this calculation. So more into calculating and building machine learning models. So interested in understanding the uh, basic details about it, so that uh, I can you know make uh, myself upskill uh, in this. So that is what uh, you know I I, am, I have expectation for this session. Okay. Thanks, Arjun. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. I'll just uh, get back to Ajaz. He just tried joining back. So hi Ajaz, uh, if you could just introduce yourself, because there has been some internet connectivity at your end. So just another time, and I mean I saw you joining back. Yeah, please go ahead and introduce yourself to us. Hi Ajaz. I think it has dropped off and he would try to rejoin again. So when he joins back, he can use the chat box to introduce himself. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'll just give a brief introduction of Ajaz from my end since there is an internet connectivity issue. So uh, Ajaz is a very senior risk professional who has been working with base of the Middle East and he oversees a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of risk projects into the different uh, banking risks. And he is an extremely seasoned professional who has shown uh, interest in uh, this market risk. Uh, demo session. Thank you, Ajaz, for your time. Thank you, everyone, for your time. And I would just start uh, the discussions. I would initiate the discussions from my end. And as I go ahead, if you have any questions, please bring them up in the chat box, and I would actually uh, address each of the questions. Right. So, if there are any questions, you can unmute yourself after I finish and ask ask those questions to me as well as you can keep them noting down in the chat box and uh, we can take it up so uh, just to set expectations right for this demo session uh, what we are going to mainly do today is to uh, we would study uh, i mean i would be explaining mostly the scope of this particular module the objective and uh, like the idea behind this module where has it come from what are the things that we are going to cover what would be the mix of it like how much theory, how much practical, and what are the things? What are what is what would exactly be the scope of the model? So mostly this would be, uh, you know, this would mostly be a scope analysis of this particular module. So just to start off, uh, to start off, I like let's understand. Uh, so I just first of all share with everyone. I would like to share with everyone 
the in the you know the objective or the inspiration behind this particular module now apart from the professional interest there has been a very specific reason as to from where this module stems for us right so uh i mean one of my academic interests has been to explore uh, stock markets right stock market and especially crisis and stock market crashes so as i have been exploring and through some of my previous uh, uh, some of the most recent uh, conference presentations that i have had and through the through some very recent researches uh, what i got to see is that over the last two decades markets have inherently become more risky and with the increasing impact of the globally systematically important financial institutions uh, there has been a very increasing interdependence between uh, the economies so for example if i am to talk about say the most recent financial crisis that we have experienced in the year 2008 uh, a prime uh, i mean a precursor to that has been the housing bubble where the housing prices were soaring sky high only to go through a market correction after which the housing prices has crashed. So a huge amount of wealth was lost in between. And as a result of the same, what happened was the globe entered into a financial crisis where many big, large organizations, especially banks and investment banks were bailed out by the government uh creating a loss a huge loss of uh taxpayers wealth so over this uh and with this what we saw that the entire globe went into a market uh, into a recession and especially in india we have some big financial institutions who had invested in the securities issued by the leading investment banks uh from us which finally led uh, which had very adverse shocks on these uh, financial institutions as well so as we move to study the banking sector as we move to study the banking uh, the the financial order especially the banks uh, what we get to see is the banks are not only threatened by credit risk or operational risk but nowadays the impact of market risk is even more significant compared to the other two types of risk given the huge exposure that these uh, international banking organizations have to the you know to the globe to the uh, economies across so there is a huge interlinkage between different economies and uh, the shocks they often spill over from one economy to the other in case of a crisis so the exposure of banks are not only uh, through the credit or through their transaction or the borrowing risk, but they also increase and they are also felt through the tremors that happen in the financial channel, the financial interlinkages and through the confidence channels. Now, under this uh, scenario, right? So what uh, the way? I, so the way I had started off my analysis or my uh, study was by comparing the time gaps between two uh, you know between two financial crashes so and as i moved on so in one of my conference presentations in the year 2014 uh, i had been investigating you know uh, different uh, I, I mean i've been investigating stock market bubbles and as a study what i came to see was that the gap between two successive bubbles have gradually started reducing right the average gap between two crashes had started reducing uh, as the years have gone by right so as you can see if you have a look into this number uh, between uh, 1600 to 1700 the number of crashes that one got to see was two whereas between 20 2000 2014 we had seen 10 major crashes uh, within a given span of time in the US market. So these start, this study was based on US markets. So uh, with that, what we get to see is, or my conclusions uh, that I drew from this analysis was that the market was becoming inherently risky. 
and with more and more financial innovations happening and more and more uh, globally systematically important financial institutions playing their roles playing their active i mean doing their activities uh, the globe had become uh, the global markets have become more and more are inherently riskier which at the same time had a, I mean, which also made or which also created a channel of shock for the banks now under this background i just we decided uh, to explore market risk further now uh, sometimes back uh, Dexlab Analytics had uh, had we at Dexlab Analytics had been exploring the domain of credit risk, the risk which arises from borrowers or transaction risks, and this endeavor is just an extension of the same to just explore uh, the different channels, different sources through which uh, the fluctuations in the market can affect the banking risk. So, with this, uh, so this is how the module has been initiated. And this is what we would be talking right about at the beginning of uh, this market risk module, where we would be essentially talking about the different kind of risk that a bank faces. And we would be more and more or more, uh, we would be emphasizing on the role of the GC fees and the C fees uh, in, in the, you know, I mean, the role of uh, GC fees and C fees in creating a financial crisis. And this study would be mostly based on the 2008 financial crisis. And what are the different channels through this crisis can happen, how it can adversely affect the markets, and how does that inherently risky market impose a risk for the banking order as a whole? And what are the different levels of capital that a bank is required to set aside in order to prevent or in order to face that risk now having said that uh, we need to understand that what exactly is a market uh, so what exactly is the market risk so we have been talking a lot about it uh, and what you can make out in a nutshell is that market risk is something it's a risk which is created by the fluctuations in the market. Now, what? How do I define the market, and how? In what? Uh, you know, what would be my parameters for defining a market? So basically, when I talk about the market, I talk about uh, the most of the you know, different kinds of markets that we come across in an economy, and we broadly divide them into uh, four categories. One is we talk about the debt market. The debt capital market. Uh, the debt capital market is uh, where, you know, it's that market where from which the debt capitals are, the debt capital is raised and therefore this is related to the interest rates, right? The interest rate, which is often seen to be the cost of uh, the borrowing and lending funds. So what are the types of any risks or any challenges or any disorder in this debt market would be affecting the interest rate now similarly the second set of market that we talk about are the asset markets or the equity markets where we have the stock markets uh, or the stock markets where the equity is traded or stocks previous stocks are traded the third type of market that we talk about is the foreign exchange market which ex which creates a currency risk or the foreign exchange risk and finally, we talk about the liquidity market. Now, our objective in this part of the, or in this part of the module would be to explore each of these type of risks. So because, so now the question comes out is, why do I need to explore these kind of risks? Or why do I need to explore these four markets? So because these are the, these, if we think about, are the more or the broadest or the more generalized or generalized these are the four most important sources of risk which can affect a bank so any rates of say a uh, interest rate shock or any interest rate risk can affect the bank's interest earnings equity price risk or equity risk can adversely impact the bank's uh, portfolio investments other returns from the portfolio investments and the third 
the third factor that you can see over here foreign exchange risk is directly related to the bank because banks deal in foreign currency any unnecessary volatility or uh, you know any crash or any such disorder in the currency market would be directly impacting the bank so these are sources you know which is not directly related to the lending that the bank does that is mostly explored under credit risk over here what we are trying to do is we are trying to explore the different kind of the different sources of the risk apart from lending which is affecting the bank which is directly related to the market and the macroeconomic and the market movements which has a direct effect on the bank so this